Previously on It Came From The Bargain Bin. Where in the world did it come from? Okay, let's let's get cracking. I'm Guillotine, and welcome to the Gaming Guillotine, where I execute the poorly executed. And today I'm continuing my review of the Glacier Racer series, which... If you recall my last video game review... Okay, so Glacier 2 actually wasn't all that bad, all things considered. It had some spirit to it. And Glacier 3 was a brown, murky pile of sickness shoved into a car's frame. However, when I first started doing this thing a few years ago... No, I don't have procrastination issues, don't bring that up, stop talking! I could find nothing on the original title that the Glacier series started off with. There was nothing on Wii, nothing in the bargain bins that I could find. I literally couldn't find anything. This developer is so obscure and their stuff is so relegated to bargain bin garbage that I just literally couldn't find anything. So, I started researching the internet. As a last resort, I turned to eBay, and lo and behold, there it was from a UK seller. So I snatched it up and waited right by my mailbox with an axe to grind. The mailman was very skittish that week. But enough origin story. Let's boot this thing up and see what it has in store for us. Well, I see the Hemi CGI menu is very much in place. Let's, let's dive in and see how it holds up otherwise. Oh. Wow. This is, this is just... Wow. I know our current era of games sits on a lot of graphical fidelity, but this is shameful. This came out in 05, need I remind you. The same year as Resident Evil 4, Psychonauts, Shadow of the Clauses, Civilization 4, and... I, I mean, this was the launch year of the Xbox 360! Need I go on?! Also, it looks like the dev team did that thing where they wanted to include real-life cars but couldn't get the licensing. On that note, all the cars look like a cheap rip-off of the Chrysler Crossfire. Well, I can forgive graphics if it plays well enough, so let's dive in. <laughs> <coughs> well, uh, well, I'll say one thing starting out. It, it's very easy to tell where you're supposed to be going. Probably because... The courses exclusively occupy the bottoms of canyons! Off the starting line, the car seems to control well enough, but the physics make things very awkward very fast. Fortunately, the AI opponents seem to be in the same boat. Speaking of the AI, I found most of the races usually boiled down to me versus only one of the other racers. The track seemed to be just as much a hazard against your fellow racers as it is you. They get hung up on terrain, debris, and sometimes even each other. But strangely enough, once you get a hang on the physics... You, you know... I... I'm not... I don't know whether I should be ashamed, but I actually found myself... having fun! Now bear in mind, this is on the stipulation that I went into this game expecting absolutely nothing and coming out of it with a moderate sense of satisfaction, and I was just as surprised as anyone. It's not good by any stretch of the word, but it's in that rare category of games where you play it, and in spite of everything being so mechanically or cohesively poor, you still somehow find fun in it. That's not to say I don't have things to complain about. N no, no, quite the contrary. Content-wise, there isn't much to say. There's only about a dozen races that unlock as you beat the previous ones. However, to start adding challenge, the game inserts police. And in the far later levels, they start putting in attack helicopters that perform bombing runs directly behind the leader, so may God have mercy on you if you mess up, and that makes you the second place pretty much totally screwed. But as I played more tracks, I noticed two things. Firstly, that they recycled some of these tracks over to Glacier 2. You know, I kind of retroactively want to execute Glacier 2 because they flat out recycle the levels from Glacier 1, just straight copy-pasting jobs. Secondly, and more importantly, I noticed that some of the elements of the track seem familiar the more I played, and I don't mean that as far as connecting it to Glacier 2. Now granted, it's already hard to tell these tracks apart due to most of them already taking place in the bottom of small canyons, but if you pay attention, you'll see that some of the track segments recycle small bits, and then it hits you. The level designers just made one really long track! 
The level designer only made one really long level, and then he cut it up into pieces so that he could extend the content and have multiple levels. And the final level is just the one track in one grand marathon of a race. Oh, and before I forget, I swear this one covered bridge in the middle of a canyon with nothing running under it screwed me more than I care to mention. Now that final race on the one really long track is actually pretty challenging, and considering all the elements that are end up stacked up against you, it actually feels really good to beat that one race. But that is nothing in comparison with the ending. <laughs> I cannot stress in words how poor this thing is. I I just have to show you my initial reaction when I was when I was initially recording this. It is so god awful that it's great. Jump, or nearly destroyed. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even finish it. <laughs> it's still really this down at me. You are the ultimate winner of Glacier 2005. Okay. <laughs> I get to admire my... Now you can go home and brag about your victory. Because I'm... Cause... Cause I'm really gonna br- on, on your way home, something terrible happens. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 what? I beat the race, the final level, with everything, and my reward is death. Is this why they so desperately needed to carry on with a sequel? Because I can't think of too many other reasons. In all honesty, they should have just let sleeping dogs lie. This game leaves me in a conundrum. I constructed the guillotine in order to purge the unworthy filth from my collection, stuff that absolutely had no redeeming value, but I can't say that I found that in this game. It's so bad, it's enjoyable. I mean, it's, it's like Plan 9 from Outer Space of video games. It's, it's something that you just have to get around with your friends and just... If you can play this with your friends, it's about as much fun as anything else, I'd argue. I mean, granted, anything is better with friends, but just seeing how this train wreck comes together in multiplayer, that's an experience that I can only dream of at this point. So, while definitely not good, I'm not going to execute this thing. Instead, I'm going to keep it around and keep it as something sort of akin to a court jester. Something that I can amuse myself with and just laugh and see as an example of how not to do something, but still- Ah, who am I kidding? This thing dies tonight. Wow. That was a thing. Thanks again for watching The Gaming Guillotine. I, I have a lot of fun making these stupid little videos, and I hope I have another participant in the long legion of worst games ever. I hope to be making some more of these videos again soon now that I've gotten my stuff together. I'll, uh, I'm definitely going to keep making Team Fortress 2 videos. But until next time, God bless all of you.